I ended up doing was I had searched around the internet and had um, done some research and about you know fertility struggling you know and I thought well my, my diet's really really clean and I exercise so it's not that sort of thing um, what else could it be which then kind of led me down the um, are you ovulating road which leads you down to what is your morning temperature basically what I ended up finding out was my morning temperature was really really low um, and so I actually called uh, my herbalist and she said oh we've got a struggling thyroid here so that's that's my story and um, within making some of the changes I'm going to share with you guys today within um, two months I was pregnant had a healthy baby you know I had a ton more energy felt a ton more better lost weight you know all, all my symptoms of my thyroid that I really to be honest couldn't even feel um, they went away I noticed them after they went away it was sort of like wow this this weight is lifted off of my shoulders so anyway, you are solely responsible for your own health and your own health choices. Um, if you want to implement some of this stuff, it's your choice. I'm not responsible. Don't come chase me down. I'm just letting you know what I know. Okay, so where did I learn what I know? Um, the guy at the top, he's awesome and amazing. Um, his name is Vaughn, and um, he's a naturopathic doctor and herbalist, um, along with a huge long list, a gas practitioner, um, all sorts of stuff. Anyway, he's down in Kansas City, and he's an amazing person. He knows a ton of stuff. And the one thing I really love about him is if you get on that website, spiritofhealthkc.com, he has over 200 videos for free that you can get on and watch. And this is stuff that he, um, the classes he was giving um, to people locally, like on your thyroid, and he has all different topics. You know, eye health, tooth health, every kind of sort of thing you might want. Um, and then also, obviously, he's close. I mean, not really close like Sioux Falls, but he's in Kansas City, and he has an online store that sells a lot of what I'm going to tell you about today. So he's a really amazing resource. Um, also, totally friendly over the phone. I had a question and called their store, and they gave the phone right to him. And I was able to not drive to Kansas City to get my simple question answered. So he's, he's uh, full of information there. Very good resource. And then the bottom is Rhonda, and um, this is the um, nutritionist and herbalist I sat through um, a whole day of her lectures at the conference in uh, Minneapolis and she has on her website um, short podcasts that she can watch so if you listen to what I have to say today and you have more questions or you need more fill in the blank Sorry. Um, either one of these resources are amazing um, I will say that Rhonda's is a little more complex so if you like like the science side of things like all the way down to your molecules Rhonda's more for you. If you just kind of want an easy exclamation, you know, of what's going on and what, what, what you can do for it, Vaughn is more your man. Okay, so this is the thyroid. And I don't know, when I first started my thyroid journey, I didn't even know where the thyroid was. I didn't even know I had one. I didn't even know anything. So anyway, this is your thyroid, just in case you don't know where it is. It's right at the base of your neck. Um, the thyroid gland is the largest gland in the human body. Um, the thyroid gland is butterfly shaped, as you can see. It's on the front of your neck, and um, it sets your entire metabolic rate in your entire body. Um, it controls your weight, how you feel, if you feel sluggish or energetic, if you feel foggy or crisp with your thinking. Um, it controls your weight. Um, if you feel your mood, cheerful, blue, um, it basically controls everything, even all the way down to your cholesterol and your female hormones. Um, when your thyroid is not functioning, functioning optimally, obviously you're going to feel dull, you're not going to feel good, you're going to feel a lack of energy, um, you're going to have fertility problems, um, that sort of thing. It all kind of links in, and I'll show you. Everything in your body is linked to your thyroid. It's pretty cool. Okay, so thyroid issues. The pictures on the right are both examples of what's called goiter. Um, and just because you don't have a bulging neck does not mean that you don't have a thyroid issue. Um, goiter is basically what happens is the thyroid gland itself um, swells. It tries to get large to try and catch any iodine that is in your body. And so it swells up. And, and when, I, when I got online and looked for these um, pictures, there was a <laughs> Some people, it's pretty drastic. I mean, it's like, whoa, this huge mass on their neck. And it's their thyroid has swelled that large that is just trying to grab anything and everything, any, any sort of iodine in, in your bloodstream. It's just starving for iodine. Um, other signs are cold hands and feet, 
unexplained weight gain would be with hypothyroid, which means a sluggish thyroid. Um, unexplained weight loss, if you're lucky. <laughs> you have hyperthyroid, but that's only less than 10% of the cases of thyroid issues. Um, repeated infections, something that just keeps coming back. Your immune system can't seem to battle it. Hair loss, thin nails, dry skin, um, muscle tension, um, monthly menstrual cycle irregularities, miscarriage, which was my case because in trying to conceive, I actually did have a miscarriage. And that was one of the things that um, the herbalist said, whoa, wait a second, you know, we've got something off here. And that was kind of our, our little flag. A lot of other things can, can cause miscarriage too, but um, depression, low energy, constipation, foggy thinking, low body, basal temperature, hormone imbalance, and then the goiter on the other side there. Okay, so function of thyroid. Why is this stinking gland so important? <laughs> um, I don't know if I can say number one or not, but it is really important. Um, it protects the body against harmful negative charged ions. So anything that's in our environment that is negatively charged, meaning harmful to your body, your thyroid is your shield. It's the number one thing it tries to protect you from. Um, once again, it regulates your metabolism, it regulates your heart rate, um, and then determines the speed of food moving through the digestive tract. So that's why you would see constipation. It's all kind of linked together. Uh, regulates bone mineral density and overall bone density. So that's, once again, your fingernails and brittle bones, ones that are easy to break. Um, maintains energy levels. Um, maintains normal body temperature. Um, stimulates glucose uptake. So a lot of times people who have trouble with blood sugar can also be linked right back to the thyroid in some cases. Um, manages growth rate in children, so um, very important there. And then improves your cogn uh, cognition, so your thinking, which is why you would be foggy. Um, okay, so then this is the basic triangle that I found was absolutely amazing. And I wasn't presented it quite this way until I went to the conference. And that is if you can just envision your body as a triangle, and if any of the three things on the points of the triangle are off, it totally changes the entire shape of the triangle. The reason why that's important is because you have your hypothalamus, which is in your brain. Both of these um, glands in the middle there of the triangle are both in your brain. And the hypothalamus receives messages from the rest of your body. And what ends up happening is it sends a signal down to your pituitary gland, which is basically right underneath it. You can kind of see it in that picture over there. Um, and what the pituitary gland does is it receives that signal, which is either excrete more hormone type signals to these glands that are on the outside there or you know lessen what you're excreting what you're excreting and now that can be really complicated if you want to know more we can go into detail but basically there's eight different signaling hormones that come from the pituitary and they control anything from adrenal glands um, your ovaries and testes your um, growth in children um, and also in adults um, it controls the bone and muscle mass and fat dis distribution, um, breast milk production, and um, um, let's see. The, the, some of those hormones also prompt the kidneys to increase water absorption in the blood, so that's really important. Um, so anyway, as you can see, if just one of these, you know, if your adrenals are shot because you're really stressed and you're overdoing it, then this triangle is no longer a regular triangle. It gets pulled. And then when your pituitary gland is sending out these signals, the, the adrenals aren't going to be here. You know, if you redo this entire triangle, you know, maybe it's up here, maybe it's down here. But this arrow is going to completely miss the adrenals. So technically, if you have adrenal issues, you probably have thyroid issues. And, you know, vice versa. All this sort of thing all links in together, which I thought was just amazing. I never knew this until the conference. And um, I never knew it was all linked together like that, you know. So, but it's also kind of scary because if one thing's linked to the other, <laughs> it's one big web. Okay, so the basic here, six pillars of thyroid health. Number one is diet. Um, number two, iodine consumption. Number three, gut health. Number four, liver health. Number five, avoidance of toxins. And number six, adrenals. And we'll get into all those in more depth here.
Okay, so diet. We'll do that one first. Foods that are harmful to your thyroid. So estrogenic foods. So all soy products. Anything that contains any form of soy. Big no-no. And the reason why is because those foods, um, the body reads them as a basically fake, I call it fake estrogen. But it's just going to swaying stuff way off. So just try to avoid soy products. Um, processed foods which contain chemicals and preservatives, obviously not good for any part of your body, but especially not the thyroid since it's your shield and it's protecting you, okay? Um, vegetable oils, so corn oil, soybean oil, cottonseed oil, canola oil, that sort of thing. Um, glutens and grains. Um, now this doesn't have to be a long-term thing, but when you are trying to heal your body, it's really important that you take the load off. And so when you're consuming things like gluten and grains, those are harder for your GI tract to, to digest. So it's a heavier load on your body. And so it's really important that you eliminate those or at least limit them while you're trying to heal your thyroid. Um, sugar, that's a big one. I know it's Christmas and I'm saying take away your sugar. But sugar, um, eliminating that out of the diet is huge because sugar weakens your immune system and your thyroid and your immune system, it's kind of like a teeter-totter. Um, if your immune system is in overdrive, then your thyroid function slows down to allow the immune system to really battle stuff out. It's only temporary, but if you're constantly eating sugar, that whole balance is going to be off. Um, another one that a lot of people overlook, tap water, because um, it contains fluoride and chlorine, and both of them um, block your body's ability to utilize iodine. So in your body, um, Basically, I'm trying to, not to make this too complicated. Um, your body takes iodine, and in the process of utilizing it, um, there's a point where your body needs to grab onto it, and it has to link together. And this part has to be iodine. And iodine will get pushed out of the way, and fluoride fits right in there, as does chlorine and a long list of other things. So if you're drinking tap water, your body is not going to be even absorbing the iodine that you're consuming because fluoride's gonna be in its place. Oh, and then bromine, store-bought breads, that's a no-no. Try to make your bread from home because they put bromine in it, which is supposed to strengthen the bread, I don't know, I'm not a baker, but um, that also clinks right in there, right where the, the fluoride should be, or I mean, sorry, iodine should be, um, it, that bromine just pushes it right out of the way. Okay, so good food. Um, this is in particular to heal your thyroid, but it'll help you heal almost anything anyway. Uh, fat-soluble vitamins, A, C, and E, which are all obviously fat-soluble, hence the name, meaning you need to be consuming fat with them. Um, zinc, oysters, I'm not a big oyster person, so red meat, <laughs> poultry meat, and pumpkin seeds. I can totally do pumpkin seeds, though. That's awesome. Um, iron. Uh, vitamin A and D, um, cod liver oil you can take for that. B vitamins, um, because a lot of the stuff that happens around your thyroid, there's a lot of free radical damage happening down at the cellular level. Um, B vitamins really help with that. So if you have a really stressful life, lots of um, stress that you're not managing very well, B vitamins is a good way to help manage that. So you'd want to up your consumption of things like liver, kidney, um, meat, shell, shellfish, fish, clams, oysters, and eggs. And if you can stand raw egg yolks, that's an awesome way to get it. Um, selenium from Brazil nuts, mushrooms, and liver. If you're going to do Brazil nuts, though, like the selenium is so concentrated within the Brazil nut, don't eat very many at once. Um, magnesium. Again, pump, pumpkin seeds. That's a double whammy right there. Um, leafy green vegetables, um, kelp, and bone broth. And then vitamin E. Uh, you can get it from almonds, spinach, sweet potato, and avocado. And obviously, any of these nuts, you're going to want to follow the Weston A. Price protocol. Make sure you soak them first to get rid of those anti-nutrients that nature put on them. Oh, it's like overwhelming. Most of you guys already know this entire slide. <laughs> okay, best diet for thyroid health is um, the recommendations from the Weston A. Price Foundation, um, which Weston Price traveled the world early 1900s. Um, studied cultures and wrote down what they found that they were eating what led to such great health So this is just basically an overview of what he found So at the top it's eat whole unprocessed foods 
eat beef, lamb, game, organ meats, poultry, eggs from pasture-fed animals, eat wild fish, not farm-raised, because farm-raised fish are fed not so good things, um, eat full-fat milk products, um, preferably raw and or fermented, um, animal fats such as lard, towel, egg yolks, cream, butter, um, Use only traditional vegetable oils such as extra virgin olive oil. Expeller pressed sesame, so sesame oil. <laughs> Small amounts of expeller uh, pressed flax oil, tropical oils, coconut oil, palm oil, and palm kernel oil. And then the cod liver oil, which we talked about for thyroids. Eat fresh fruits and vegetables, preferably organic. And the reason why organic is so important is because non-organic vegetables are being sprayed with toxins that also affect your thyroid, along with a long list of other things. Um, Prepare homemade stocks from bones of uh, pasture poultry, beef, pork, lamb, fed non-GMO feed, preferably eating the grass that they were made to eat. Um, filtered water, that's another one we already touched on that. Use unrefined salt. So when I say unrefined, they mean like sea salt, that sort of thing. If, you're, if, you're, if your salt is anything but white, you're good. Um, and then cook only in stainless steel, cast iron, glass. Um, and then use only natural food-based supplements. Um, because when you take supplements from the store that are synthetically derived, um, in nature, nature makes it so that they balance each other. So if you're taking synthetically derived things, it's not gonna be balanced in your body. And not only that, but synthetically derived vitamins aren't used by the body. It's just, you know, a lot of it, the body doesn't even see it as it's coming through. Um, our bodies are so smart that they, they know what a vitamin B looks like. Versus a, what is this, you know, some sort of Frankenstein vitamin B. Okay, so like the major thing in my iodine um, journey, or not, I mean my th thyroid journey is my iodine. Um, iodine is so huge. And it used to be in our food supply. They used to put it um, in the salt. And then they took it out. Um, so now it's white salt. That's why your salt is white. Um, iodine is so important, and none of us get enough of it unless you're eating at least seafood three to four times a day. I mean, sorry, a week. That's actually high in iodine because there's some seafoods that aren't. So I don't like fish, so that was off of my my protocol. <laughs> I eat some fish, but not enough. We'll say it that way. Um, so 84% of normal, healthy adults don't consume enough iodine. So that's that's a ton of people. To think about it. Um, iodine deficiency is linked to obesity, um, psychiatric disorders, fibromyalgia, fibrocystic breast disease, and a variety of cancers. Um, this was amazing, this next point, because I learned this at conference and I had no idea. And it's from that doctor, Rhonda. She said over 50% of breast cancers are cured supplementing iodine and vitamin D. Just gone. You know, not, not, in, not in remission, but no trace of it. So that's a pretty cool fact. Um, and part of the reason why that's happening is because the breasts are one of the largest stores of iodine. So if it's, if it's lacking your iodine, if, I mean, obviously your thyroid is the largest, but your breasts are your second largest. And um, so if that tissue is lacking iodine, it's going to do the swelling and the, the um, type of weird growths like your thyroid tried to in your, in your neck. Um, so nodules in the breast or in the thyroid signal a need for iodine. And then um, goiter is a sign when your body needs more iodine and selenium. Because um, it's just the thyroid is just trying to get large enough to absorb. Um, so as far as iodine goes, we need a minimum of 13 milligrams a day. And I'll, the next couple slides I think is um, where you can get iodine and what forms you can take it in. If you're pregnant, then you gotta start a little bit lower if you haven't, haven't already been on it. But it's so important in pregnancy because iodine is what helps that baby grow. <clears throat> and so smaller babies, et cetera, problems with growth in children or in, in your uterus is linked back to iodine. Okay, so here comes the warning. Sometimes iodine in some people can cause a heavy detox reaction, especially if you've been consuming things like Fluoride, chlorine, bromine, 
All these things that are linked up in your body because those toxins are in your body. And when you finally start taking iodine, the iodine is trying, it's out of war. It's kind of pushing it out. What ends up happening is you have a massive detox of the things that have been blocking your, your use of your thyroid. So um, just be careful. If you're going to start this and you're on medication or you have some health issues, link up with somebody, uh, you know, a naturopath or somebody like that. Um, who can help you and say, this is the dose you should be on, these are the medications you should stay on, this is what you should stay off. Um, when I started down my road of the thyroid health, I, I, still, I still am not on any medications, but um, my, my herbalist started me on a high dose of iodine and then had me wean off of it. Um, I'm still on it today because all of us need iodine, whether you're trying to get pregnant or you're just not, <laughs> you're just here, you know. Your body needs iodine for your thyroid. It's just a matter of what dose you're going to be okay with. Okay, so sources of iodine. There's a ton of ways to go with this. Um, over on the right there is Lugol's solution, and that's, that's just iodine. Um, and the options on taking that is you either drink it, which is like two or three drops, or you put it on your skin. Um, and then... Um, Iodorol at the top there, it's like a tablet. It's basically the same thing, but it's in a tablet form if you're, if you're okay with swallowing tablets. That's up there. Um, both of those, um, you can get on Amazon, you can get them on um, Spirit of Health KC, that, that guy I mentioned in the beginning, he sells all this stuff. Um, the way I end up going with my herbalist is with um, herbs, obviously. <laughs> um, and what it is, is it's found in nature. Iodine is found in nature in seaweeds. So... Um, the highest concentration of iodine in a seaweed is bladder rack. Um, and if you guys saw my video on making your own tincture, and if you didn't, I'll link it in a couple slides here. But you could do the same process. Um, you would just buy your bladder rack, you'd stick it, and just follow the directions in my video. And then the liquid you get off, that's your iodine. So not only is it iodine, but it also contains a whole bunch of minerals that you need while you're trying to process iodine. So that's why I kind of went with the seaweeds. It's because it's, it's just a powerhouse all together. Um, I take kelp right now. Um, it's a little bit less of an iodine um, level, but um, it's just what I started on. And actually at home right now I have a tincture going with bladder rack in it because I'm just going just gonna to go up a step. Why not, you know? Um, and the cool thing about getting iodine from natural sources like seaweed um, is that when you take it, your body grabs the iodine it needs and then you urinate out the extra. And the really cool thing about kelp, which I thought was absolutely amazing, is that kelp, um, and I'm not sure if the bladder rack does the same thing or not, but I know for sure kelp does, and that is when you take it, if you're hypothyroid or hyperthyroid, doesn't matter. Because what this is doing is this um, kelp is feeding your thyroid what it needs, the iodine and the other minerals. And so your, your body is just going to be healing. It's a lot different than taking medication for your thyroid um, because your body is going to do what it needs to in order to pull everything up. Um, whereas if you're on synthetic stuff, what ends up happening is you take the synthetic pills, which then um, basically your thyroid says, oh, something else is making hormones. Something, some, something else is doing this. So. It even, you know, your thyroid says, okay, it's sort of like if you were at, at a job and you're getting paid per hour, and they hired this young whippersnapper, you know, 16-year-old person that's running around, you know, doing everything. You're like, okay, go for it, you know? And that, that's basically the same thing with the thyroid. It's not going to work if you've already put something in there to do the work for it. Um, but, yeah, so then the, the Lugol's over there, that's one that's already made, an already made up iodine solution. Um, here's where you could buy it. Um, Spirit of Health has basically everything. Health food stores, um, Amazon, and then the Mountain Rose Herbs, if you were interested in getting and doing your own, making your own tincture of the seaweed, um, Mountain Rose Herbs sells the seaweeds. They sell all the ones I listed, the kelp, the bladder rack, and the dulce. Um, and then if you missed my video on YouTube about how to make your own tinctures, um, you just go to YouTube. Type in my name, Crystal LeBrake, and I only have one video right now, so it's just right there. You just click, click on it, and it's right there for you. But that video um, you could use for any of these seaweeds to make a nice, convenient drop form of a plant-based iodine for your thyroid. 
Okay, so to complicate things even more, <laughs> your gut has a really big role in this whole scenario. Um, basically, the gut, you, you eat iodine in some form, whatever form you want, okay? And then it heads through your stomach and it comes into your intestine. And what ends up happening is that intestine, the job of that intestine is to get it from the form of iodine. And as it passes through the wall of the intestine and into the bloodstream, it's supposed to transfer it into iodide. Those are two separate things, okay? And um, when it gets into your blood as iodide, there's a whole other transfer thing. I'll get to that later. But if your gut is not healthy and you're taking iodine, you know, the, actually utilizing it, you're going to get a lot less because that... That gut's, you know, that's its main job with iodine. And if it's already unhealthy, it's going to prioritize, and iodine might not be on the top of its list. So it's really important that we have healthy guts. Okay, so tips for improving your gut health. Um, clean up your diet, which we already talked about. Increased fermented foods. And most of you guys know why, but that's your good bacteria. That's your good fighting men down there. Um, so you want to increase those. Um, add a quality probiotic for the same reason. You want healthy gut flora down there. Um, do the GAPS diet or another healing protocol. And um, something that we met at the conference that Mary and I really thought was interesting is this, um, the Heal Your Gut Guy. Um, he has his own website and he's a um, nutritionist. And he is, um, believes in the Weston A. Price and um, he's traveling America um, talking to groups of people because he healed his own Crohn's disease. Um, so anyway, he's amazing. He has a course um, on his website, thehealyourgutguy.com. I think it's like $149. But that gives you unlimited access to all of his videos and all of his information um, that he has on there. So I've been watching them. I'm, I'm about three quarters of the way through. Um, but, and he's, he's amazing. I had some questions and so I just messaged him. You know, he was right on top of it. You know, and really clarified some things. So um, that's an amazing resource too. Um, avoid use of antibiotics. Those are hard on your gut flora. Um, even doctors these days, they, they introduce you an antibiotic, and some of them say, here, take a probiotic afterwards. <laughs> um, people, the doctors even are starting to recognize that when we take antibiotics, it totally messes with your gut flora. Um, reduce or eliminate sugar. Um, you know, the bad guys feed off the sugar, and sugar in general is hard when it, when it comes to that balancing between your immune system and your thyroid. Um, and then reduce your stress. All of us have lots of that. <laughs> okay, so why is my liver so important? Um, the liver's main job, here comes the next little puzzle piece, um, is it takes and it converts your unactive thyroid hormone into T3, which is your active form. Your body can't use the inactive form of the thyroid hormone. So if your liver is clogged and not doing so well, it's going to have a hard time converting T4 to T3. Um, another reason why your liver is amazing is because its main job is to cleanse and detox your whole entire body. Um, when the liver detoxes, it has three main ways. Um, filters the blood, um, and it, use, it uses enzymes to break down chemicals. And the main thing about that is you really have to be careful. An enzyme is so hard for your body to, to make. Like imagine you're building a building and it takes however long. And then you have this bad guy come in and knock it over. You have to use it so much. That, that's going to be a stress on your entire system. So the less toxins you have, the less load on your thyroid when it comes to detoxing and um, cleaning up your blood supply and your blood system. Um, at any given time, there's a pint of blood in your liver that's being detoxed. Um, blood detox is uh, critical because blood is loaded with bacteria, endotoxins, um, and other toxic substances from the intestines. A uh, healthy liver clears almost 100% of bacteria and toxins from the blood before the blood enters the general circulation. And that's very important when you're talking about illnesses. A lot of the illnesses we see today over and over again, they can be linked back to a sluggish liver. Um, there's just so many places to get thyroid, or sorry, so many places to get toxins. Um, that a lot of our livers, even on a healthy diet, that we truly, really, truly try to watch what we eat, you know, still can be a little bit sluggish, but especially with the mainstream um, diet of most Americans. Okay, so liver support. 
Here come the herbs again, because I'm the herb lady. <laughs> okay, so herbs such as rosemary, I, you know.